Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we'll learn how to draw this infographic step by step. This is more of an intermediate level tutorial. Uh, you can download the source file and follow along. You can manipulate or use any of these different objects. This is artwork that I had UKR Art Design create, and you can learn more about him and his artwork in the description of this video. Uh, been really great working with him. The first tool we'll use is the rectangle tool. So go ahead and just draw a rectangle. And Inkscape remembers the settings you used last, so we can change the color back to gray and turn up the opacity um, if by chance your, your settings are not the, the defaults. And then we can go back to selection mode and we can change around. This is gonna be the size of our base canvas, so it's okay, we're kind of zoomed way far out now. We can go right click, duplicate, and that creates a second rectangle over top of this. So if we shrink it in, it kind of gives it a little bit more depth. Now we have that outside darker gray. Notice it has a yellow stroke, so we'll go into fill and stroke and turn off the stroke paint, but we'll leave the fill on. We can go right click, duplicate again. So now we have three rectangles all inside of each other. We'll make this one a little bit smaller as well um, and change the color to a lighter pink here. We can go to path difference while having it and the one behind it selected, and that kind of creates an outline gray so we're not accidentally clicking over top of it. We go to the rectangle tool again, and we'll draw our first item here. We'll go to path, object to path, and then we'll go into the edit paths by nodes, and that lets us be able to choose these. We can select both of these nodes here, and click this button in the top left corner, and it'll add a third node. Then we can kind of bring this out and create an arrow type shape. We can go into the fill while it's selected, and we can grab this color picker and choose this gray color so we're matching our color scheme now. And we'll grab some text. We're, we're gonna go ahead and change the color later, but first we'll grab the text tool and we'll just paste this text right in here. And we can make it bold, we can change the font if we'd like. Go ahead and lock this here and it makes it so that we can scale this up. You can also hold the shift key while doing this. It keeps the text from getting too distorted. We can center it on the vertical and horizontal axis while both are selected, the text and the object behind it. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and add in some more text here. This is an infographic teaching about um, binary, how computers store data in ones and zeros. So we'll grab the next um, piece of text. We can paste it in here. And so again, it's just gonna be black text now. We can center it and align it, bring it up to the size that we want, change the color of the box. We can right click and duplicate. And, this is, and then we'll turn this square to a black or a rectangle. And we'll turn the opacity down a little bit and we're gonna set this back one level we're going to move it kind of offset and then we'll lower it down one level to be behind that gives it a lot more depth so now we have this and we can change make changes to it if we need to we can duplicate this whole thing with the text and now we have another box for the next piece of text so we'll put this text in here we can resize it uh, we can go ahead and create another box here with some more information just to sort of illustrate what one bit is bits can be ones and zeros We'll add the drop shadow in a similar manner. And I'm speeding up the video here at this point even faster because a lot of these skills are ones that we're, we're already covering. If you want to slow this down, you can slow down this video here on YouTube in the bottom right-hand corner. You can go as slow as 25% speed. We'll grab the star tool and we'll draw a three-sided star. The corners are up here. If it's three sides, it's actually a triangle. And so we have this and um, we need to convert it by going path, object to path. Now that it's a path, we can edit these nodes. We can select the bottom nodes. We can add a third one in like we did earlier. And then we can sort of create a more of an arrow, arrowhead point type shape. We can create a rectangle here, also convert it to a path and select these nodes. And then we can hold shift to move them in together. And we can adjust this whole thing and we're creating an arrow shape that we can use to kind of direct the viewer's eyes. We'll center it along the vertical axis and go path union and that creates it as one unified path. Now we can make adjustments if we want to. We can duplicate it. Um, we can add a gradient in here. Just going to fade to transparency to make it look um, a little more distinct. We'll rotate it, resize it, and move it here. And then like I said, we can duplicate and make as many of these as we want to. Just drawing some more parts here. This is a bracket that's going to have some numbers within it. And really, I hope you can see by this, just with simple rectangles, we can create all kinds of uh, great shapes and then we can do path union and bring them together. So we'll add a circle here and then we can change the colors of these. We can add text over it. So just by using circles and simple uh, polygons and rectangles, we can create some pretty interesting shapes. Another banner down here at the bottom. 
and we'll grab some more text to put in here. It's a good idea if you're doing an infographic, you probably already have the text written out. It really helps to have the text in the order that you want it. Um, so you're not having to worry about and write the text at the same time that you're creating the infographic. It just helps a lot. And with something like this where it's very repetitive, we're just changing the word bytes to kilobytes and kilobytes to megabytes. And we'll get into gigabytes and terabytes. But uh, it, it just makes it nice. You can just change the text very quickly and copy a lot of these assets. So here we're going to use a bunch of dots to kind of uh, represent the kilobytes. There's lots of individuals. We'll go path union because we're going to apply a gradient to this, which we couldn't do if it was a, a, a group. So even if objects are not touching, you can always do union. It's kind of a nice uh, trick. Adding more text in here, um, taking advantage of gradients. And as I mentioned earlier, we can go back and change the colors after the fact. So the colors really don't matter at this point. A lot of times I'll just work in grayscale, uh, or I, I won't worry too much about the colors while I'm creating the artwork. And I can go back and find a good color scheme that things go really good together and kind of arrange things and place them. This is a little page, a uh, little picture of a page. So this is going to be like representing a document, a piece of paper. And so we can say this is like a text document. So we can say, you know, a text file is approximately one kilobyte. And we can create floppy disks. So a floppy disk holds like about 1.4 megabytes, um, the old floppy disk. So we can uh, create a picture of a floppy disk here. And again, this is about, uh, this was a two hour video in total that UKR Art Design um, created for the channel. And so this is sped up, uh, I believe it's like 12x speed or maybe 18x speed. So this is going quite fast, um, almost you know, 10. 10, 12 times as fast as it was originally drawn. I did a little bit of animation with this infographic using uh, the free software Sozi, where I created a presentation and sort of adjusted the camera angles navigating around this. I'll include a link to that in the description of this video as well. Um, it kind of adds that extra, you can animate an infographic um, created in, in Inkscape um, using that free software Sozi. Just adding the final touches to complete this artwork. I hope you found this video informative. Go ahead and leave questions in the comments below if you have any, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.